Holy cremoli, it is time for uh, Tips and Tricks Special Edition number two. Let me get rid of this logo. Just get rid of that. There are special effects for you. I'm Ryan, and I am here uh, by no popular demand whatsoever to do another <laughs> unboxing video. You see, uh, last mm, Thursday I did this, I received a box of books in the mail from a magic auction, and I opened it live on air, through wire, live on wire, uh, to find out what's inside. And I maybe went a little, little crazy on that auction, um, and <laughs> I've got two more boxes to open up. So Clark is here, uh, all the way from Newfoundland. Hey Clark, nice to uh, see, see you. And he's correcting his excitement. Uh, he meant to say woohoo. Yes, woohoo indeed. We are here with two more boxes. I'm gonna only open one. I'm only gonna open one here today I'll, and I'll, I'll withhold my excitement until later this week and do it one more time. And then I'm set for books probably for another year. Honestly, it's been a, a long time since I've purchased some new magic books. Uh, my partner Caitlin will probably argue that point, but by my standards, it's been a long time since I've purchased magic books. <laughs> so this should keep me going because I think it's so important uh, when you're collecting magic books not to just acquire them. Uh, they're kind of useless unless you start reading them. So I, I have already dug in and started reading what I got last week. And so I thought I'd follow up a little bit on that. So this was uh, one of the first ones I pulled out of the box last week. And it just so happens, it says quite clearly, this is a review copy. So I thought it would be appropriate to give a little mini review of this. Uh, Mechanical Deck by Ron Bauer. First of all, uh, this whole series of booklets from Ron Bauer, what does he call them? The Private Studies series. Anything in that series gets a thumbs up from me. I think Ron put so much effort into uh, put it, creating a great routine finding out the best techniques of that kind of kind of classic trick that he studies and he goes into a lot of depth about the why of the performance. So this particular mechanical deck is his take on Al Baker's The Pack That Cuts Itself, more commonly known as The Haunted Deck. And he changes one thing about it which I'm not crazy about, but the rest of it I think is a real practical solution. It's got a lot of different ideas from different people and takes that what is now, I don't know, a 80-year-old uh, trick from Al Baker and uh, adds a few touches to it. So it's still extremely pra practical. And, you know, I'm, I, as I said, I don't agree with everything in here, but I think it's worth studying, as with everything in this series. So that's my review for my review copy <laughs> of the booklet. Now, uh, two boxes. <laughs> Clark is asking if that's a personal attack. No. You're, you're welcome to acquire books as long as you eventually uh, read them or have intention to. I'm, you know, I'm open to it, and I'm not here to judge. So pile up books all you want. <laughs> Worst case scenario, uh, firewood in, in the cold winter months. <laughs> and my partner Caitlin is checking in. What do you mean by went a little crazy? This is it, I promise. This is it. This, we, there's one box from last week, two more boxes. That is the end of the boxes from this auction. So came from the Fraser Valley Magic Club auction and uh, there are two boxes here so I'm gonna let you the audience choose should we use I should mark these somehow uh, box A are we gonna start with box A or box B and I want someone in the chat to pick because uh, we're only doing one today I don't know what's in either box A or box B what should we start with I'll, I'll wait for the comment to come in so we can get started on that. It's a box, a box roll. Clark. Clark was the first one I saw to chime in, and he says box B. So we will start by eliminating box B, and <clears throat> box A is the box we will use today. Thank you very much, Clark, for your input. Uh, it is highly valued. <laughs> oh my god, everyone agrees Box B was the right choice. So, Box B has been eliminated by popular demand, and we'll go with Box A. Thank you everyone <laughs> for participating. <laughs> Let's open this up. I 
I, I remember a story from Jay Sankey who published his first book. Uh, I think it, I think it was a hundred, a hundred percent Sankey was his first, or was it Sankey Panky? I don't remember. Anyhow, he said he was so excited to get this box of books. He was like twenty in his twenties at the time. His first book published. He got this box delivered from uh, Richard Kaufman, and he was like, so excited. He sliced open the box and sliced through the top row of books. And I always think of that when I'm opening up boxes and being careful not to cut too deep. So. <laughs> nice. So this came from uh, Glenn Labar, was one of the guys out in, in BC, and he was helping with the estate of um, Steve Dixon, who the source of a lot of these books. And I told him when he was shipping books, I learned the hard way. You can't ship books or ship anything inside of a liquor box like wine or alcohol. But they're great boxes for it's the right size. And so I told him one tip is to turn the box inside out. And he, he wrote, uh, not a booze box anymore. So thanks, Glenn. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn, for, uh, for helping out to get these all the way to Ottawa. Okay. Sauvignon Blanc. Fancy. Ooh, very well packed, Glenn. Oh, got some hard covers in here. Last, last uh, week it was mostly lecture notes and things. And, oh yes, okay. So, uh, in this auction, uh, it's, it's so weird. Bidding in an auction against all of your friends in Magic, I found really a uh, struggle because I, I want to be a nice guy. <laughs> so I don't want to, you know, outbid my friends for something that they also want. So I ended up uh, uh, chatting with Mike Norton in the background behind this auction because we were both bidding on this same lot. And it turns out the books that he wanted in that lot was not the same as the books that I really wanted from the lot. So we kind of struck a partnership deal and he got the, the book that, I, that he really wanted and I got the book that I really wanted and a couple others. So I see this is the, the top one and it's actually the very top book is the book that I was looking for in particular. And it is from an Irish magician, Pat Conway. And it is called The Pat Way to Con. And uh, I, I started seeking this book out uh, because of, uh, I was researching matchbox tricks. And apparently this guy has some of the best uh, ideas in thinking about ma the certain matchbox trick. And I re researched more about him. And just learned that he was like a powerhouse of uh, you know Irish magic and very well reputed for his creativity. And so I started looking for this book, and it came up in this auction. And so I was, uh, I'm excited to, to dig into this book. It's got some weird magic, and it's not card magic, which for me is a big plus. Um, so I'm excited to get that. That was like. The, the book I knew was in here because <laughs> that was the one that I was specifically working on. And Clark was asking, what is the book that I let go? I think the, the book that Mike Norton most wanted from that same lot was Aaron Fisher's uh, Paper Engine. Uh, and it was like, I think the first edition of that book, which is pretty highly sought after. And honestly, all the other books um, are just not sought after, except by me. I, won't, I was excited about them, but most people aren't, so. The other things in that lot was some mentalist books from Richard Bush, another guy who's kind of, he's not that well known, but I know from uh, my friend Paul Alberstadt back in Calgary, who's, who's a mentalist, um, was good friends with, with uh, Richard Bush, and he kind of, uh, he enlightened me to his reputation. So when I found this opportunity to get also some Richard Bush book, books, I was pretty excited about that too. And it's it's signed to Anthony Mativier. 
I don't know who that is. Anthony, if you're out there, I have your book. Thank you. <laughs> so there's a couple books in here from Richard Bush. I don't even know what this is about. Uh, eliciting the mind body's hypnotic idiomotor expression. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So that'll be kind of weird stuff in there. Uh, and this is kind of his most famous book or common book, The Peak Performances, which, uh, again, like it, these books are kind of narrowed into a very specific topic uh, within mentalism. So peak performances, all about peaks and billets and things. And this is about idio idio motor responses. So weird, weird stuff. <laughs> and one last little booklet here. Memorable, which I have no idea what this is. Uh, something to do with memo pad, judging by the design, but that's all I know. It's got all the usual rave reviews. Oh, even there's an even a rave review from Paul Alberstadt. So there you go. It's a small circle, mentalism. I once went to uh, the Psychic Entertainers Association convention. Magician conventions, there's weird people. But it is nowhere near the level of weirdness that I saw at the Psychic Entertainers Association Convention. Unforgettable uh, evening. <laughs> Actually, if you have the book Maximum Entertainment by Ken Weber, he talks about a show that he went to that just suffered from just horrific technical sound problems. I was at that show. That was the show in Calgary at the Psychic Entertainers Association. Guy Bavley was headlining... And it was a fantastic show, but man, oh man, uh, sound was terrible. So, I, fun fact. Now, here is a very rare gem. <laughs> I saw this in the auction. I kind of got a chuckle out of it. How about that? Ryan Pilling's very rare magician in progress. There was only 50 copies of this made. Back in uh, 2018, yeah, 2018, I went and did a, a couple lectures out on the west coast of Canada, and uh, this is my lecture book. So, fun fact, I don't actually own any until now. I now have a copy of my own book. That's how rare it is. <laughs> All right, what else do we got here? Getting into the little booklets. I love little booklets in magic more so than the big hardcover books i love the little booklets because quite often a little 12 page booklet has just as much great stuff as a 200 page book because the reason a person published that book is probably one or two things so whether they fill it with another 100 pages it doesn't really impact in my opinion the quality of the book Uh, Caitlin's rave review, uh, whatever you paid for the box, it was worth it for the Magician in Progress book. I heard that guy's a genius. I won't comment on that, but it's absolutely, I think I did, uh, I got a pretty good price on this. So, yeah, the box was worth the price. <laughs> if anyone wants that, I could autograph it and send it out. <laughs> so another uh, specific Richard Bush thing. Talking about uh, from equivocation to evocate, it's hard to read. From equivocation to evocation in theory and practice in the art of mentalism. I have no idea what's in here, but it'll be weird. And it's the same quotes from the same people in the back. Uh, <laughs> specific stuff. Here is... Goldstein's Gallery from a guy who got out of magic a few years ago. He doesn't do any magic anymore. Uh, but before that, he was quite prolific. Phil Goldstein. In fact, another Phil Goldstein on uh, Equivoque. This is one of the things I saw. Like, you know how when you see an auction that's a pile of books, you can pick out a few of the things in there? But most of them you can't really see. And so I saw like this 
much of this, and I was pretty excited about this because look, T.A. Waters, he's a guy who has a huge book on mentalism, like one of the biggest magic books there are, and so I, I just know he's a guy that has really cool, interesting stuff, off, off the wall, uh, interesting stuff, and so here's a whole series of booklets from uh, Om, Omnomancy, Cerberus, Decology, Decalogue, Decalogue, Script, <laughs> Grimweir, Octasm, Tantionic, and Psychometry. So the whole <laughs> set, the whole set of mostly made up words is here. Interesting. A lot of mentalism books so far. I accidentally became a mentalist a couple years ago. When I was working on my fringe show, Suitcase of Wonders, and I, I, my goal was to create a show that gave the audience control of the magic show. And just by its nature, it ended up being a mentalism show. Not on purpose, I didn't want to be a mentalist, but it just a accidentally happened to me. So here we go, more interesting stuff. Magical Mentalia by uh, G.E. Aerosmith. Not the band, unrelated, spelled differently. That is classic old magic book with like tricks with slates and whatnot. Uh, that looks like a photocopy. I think. It's hard to tell sometimes with old books whether they are a, a legit photocopy or a, or a not legit photocopy. But whenever I find a uh, what appears to be a not legit photocopy, I just toss it in the shredder. But I'll have to figure out whether that is legit or not. Scatterthought. I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of it. I have no idea who it's by. <laughs> Clark is, is giving me ideas. The Accidental Mentalist. Great title for the next book. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know me, like, my, my whole thing in magic is to make my magic as interactive as possible. And just by nature of getting so much feedback and so much direction from the audience, it becomes like a lot of mentalism. So, uh, scatter thought is... Uh, created by Richard Stride, I don't know. Illustrated by Alan Wasilek, I don't know. And presentational ideas by both. I never heard of either of those guys, which is cool. Get to learn something new. And I don't know who that is. There's a lot of weird stuff in here. I have no idea. I've never seen this before. I can't. I don't even know what it's supposed to say. Or who that is. Oh, that's that Phil Goldstein guy. Thought it looked kind of familiar. <laughs> Master Mental Divination, H.M. Miller. Exclusive Dr. Grote release for the advanced performer. Mm. I don't know if I'm ready for that. We'll find out. This is like literally... Four pages. No, not even. Okay, it is literally four pages of information, and it costs five dollars, and this looks like to be about 1950. So whatever's on those four pages is pretty valuable stuff. <laughs> oh, this looks like the original of this photocopied one. Maybe. I don't know. No, that's number two and that's number three, so who knows? I'll figure that out. Dynamite Mentalism. Oh, this one. Uh, 13 Steps uh, Backwards for Mentalism is a uh, Michael Weber set of notes. I remember when he lectured in Calgary many years ago, I picked this up from him. And I've actually performed things from here. But um, another thing about bidding against friends, I got a message from Nate Cranzo 
and said he won't really he said okay I'll, I'll give you this one he only wanted this so i said i, I might just send this to <laughs> to his way <laughs> the master method of hypnotism by ormond mcgill mm. beware next time you meet me i could be a master see the secret right there is to stare through the person Easy peasy. I can master that in no time. Richard Osterlund's surrounded slow motion center tear. Because there's nothing like being surrounded and slowly tearing things. Very impressive stuff. Oh, I recognize that. Does anyone else recognize that logo? Bunch of arrows? Or is it a bunch of arrows? Look at the negative space, and it is an H. That is Mickey Hades Publications. And this is Mind Novas by Stephen Minch. This is before Stephen Minch had his own publishing company. Because Mickey Hades, of course, is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And Stephen Minch is from Seattle, where Mickey Hades opened up his second magic shop uh, briefly. And that's more than you, hey, is that, is that, oh, it is, look at this, okay, this is, this is, uh, that little uh, back of the card, which you may recognize goes with those ESP cards, just so happens, I have a deck of those ESP cards right here, so look at that, I got, I got everything I need. For mind noving. It's all coming together. It's all coming together here. <laughs> Caitlin is making fun of me. <laughs> Can you smell the paper tearing? That's a little, that is a line I use in my show. When I'm doing the newspaper tear. <laughs> okay. More paper. I can smell the paper coming out of the bag. That's some, the, the comb bound collection over here. I'm just gonna put this back in. Whoops, some breaking comb over here. The trouble with these old comb bound books, they get very brittle. But I don't mind. I'm not a collector of books. I'm not super concerned about the condition or the perfect, the perfectness of them. I'm a reader of books, and so this doesn't bother me. It happens <laughs> by the nature of old books. Inside this bag, we have uh, hopefully a complete set. This is Workers from Michael Close, and I think there should be five of them. There's one. There's two. Oh. Guess not. There is one, two, and four workers for Michael Close. But that, honestly, is more workers than you need. I've become a big fan of Michael Close, uh, reading his um, most recent books, maybe most recent books, uh, which I can't think of the title of right now. Um, but he has a set of two books. And the thing I, I've come to really love about Michael Close is his construction of effects. I think he has a really great perspective and, and just his experience in being able to build effects that uh, have a nice flow to them and a build to them. And uh, par yeah, thanks, Clark. Paradigm Shift, Volume 1 and 2 from Michael Close is his, is his newer books. And, uh, you know, like, this was probably published when he was in his 20s working at the Illusions restaurant and Paradigm Shift really shows how how a person can mature through magic. I'm not saying this is bad stuff but um, I, I just I love how he's growing as a magician and how it shows in his work. So. Oh this is one I used to have when I was real new in magic I had this one the book of John John Mendoza, who I think passed away uh, this past within the past year. 
So I remember learning from this book his cups and balls routine and also uh, the, fi the poker deal from this. Routine, no. Is it routine poker mental or... Anyway, not important which one it is. But yeah, I had that when I was like, um, not even, I was in my teens when I was working on this book. So that'll be interesting to kind of revisit. See how I've matured as a magician and look at this material again. And here's the one that's, whoops, falling apart as I speak. That comb is breaking down. Ooh, the magic of Matt Shulian. That's still dropping pieces. Uh, Chicago Bar Magician. I know Matt Shulian because of learning through Eugene Berger teaches Matt Shulian stuff. So it's the nice thing about anyone who grew up in a as a bar magician, their magic is so straight to the point <laughs> because they're dealing with audiences that aren't so good at comprehending details. So bar magic is always very direct and strong. And speaking of bar magicians, from across the pond, Scotty York is the probably classic bar magician from uh, the UK. And speaking of magic that gets to the point, close up to the point. Man, it's like these segues write themselves. Peter Duffy. <laughs> Peter Duffy is one of those guys who's created, like, published, God, probably a hundred magic books. Al Mann, mentalist, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the Super Clip Line Plus, which is a uh, interesting little idea for, I think it's for forcing a word, is the idea of that. But I've said too much. Oh, I think this one was in the last box, Jay Sankey Lecture Notes. So... I'll have to figure out what to do with the duplicates here I've collected. I'd have to do some giveaways. This is, I believe, I <laughs> I think I recognize this typeface as being a Mickey Hades book. Even though there's no marks on it, I'm pretty sure, just because I've seen other books with that same typeface. Mm, oh no, Magic Ink. I was wrong. Well, there you go. Those Beautiful Dames, I believe, is about... Uh, kind of a history look at magic assistants, I think. Yeah. Some various biographies. Uh, oh no, look, looks like not uh, magic assistants. It is uh, women magicians through the ages. Very cool. Yeah, June Merlin. Definitely magicians of their own right. Cool. What we got here? Magician tested, audience approved, the magic of Dan Fleshman. I had a Dan Fleshman book when I was young, also from Jeff Busby and John Mendoza, uh, but it was a different one. So I don't know what's in here. But another guy has very straightforward uh, magic. I remember Michael Close and Danny Fleshman were on a video Put out by Stevens Magic, the Greater Magic Video Library Series. They did a restaurant magic one with Michael Close, Dan Fleshman, uh, Bill Malone, and who was the fourth person? Oh man, can't believe I've forgotten this. This was like I watched this tape a bazillion times. Wait, hmm, dang it. All right, well, I'm clearly getting old. <laughs> oh, hey, here's the book that I had from, from Danny Fleshman. Excellence by Danny Fleshman. It's got his ring routine in here, ring and string. It's got his red hot mama in here. Um, and this is uh, very restaurant-oriented stuff. Oh, his cups and balls was in here. Yeah. Classic, classic $100 bill switch is the original uh, publication of it. This, this, is, this is like you talk about 
the roots of magic. This one has gone on to inspire a heck of a lot. Oh, here's another one I recognize from my youth. Look at that. McDonald's Aces. How many people got that one from the magic shop? I used to perform that one all the time. From Frank Garcia. Trick. Ooh, more from Stars of Magic. This is the new Stars of Magic, not the original book. Uh, Okito Box Mag Magic by David Roth. Does he have a mustache? Yes, he does have a mustache in that. Oh, here's another clip. I was talking last week. Um, it included the cardboard connection. This is this is what I learned, the immaculate connection. I, can, I, I learned this again when I was like 15 years old, and to this day I can... Perform it at the drop of a hat. Use it all the time. Still think it's a great trick. This one I do not know at all. The Eternal String. Your search for King Khan ends here. Oh, Bob Farmer. Uh, tsunami. Bob Farmer is uh, published some great magic. I don't know what Tsunami is, but it's a trick with uh, 20 different versions. His Bamo Monty monster, one of my favorites. Camerand Academy, oh, I miss those guys. I remember when my, uh, oh, Clark is telling me Tsunami is great. I, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to chat about that. If you're familiar with it, I, I'm not. Must be a card thing. <laughs> it is a card thing. It says it says right in there. <laughs> My every time about this year, um, I would get magic books from Cameron Academy for Christmas when I was a kid. And I remember my mom telling me about phoning Guy Cameron in Quebec and talking with him on the phone. And my mom doesn't know magic and trying to order magic books for me and apparently it was very friendly. <laughs> but hard to understand, uh, I think at the time. Warren Michaels, lecture notes, lecture on silent magic. That'll be interesting because I talk a lot and I've always been trying to figure out how to talk less when I do magic. That'll be cool. Arcane Magazine from uh, Jeff Busby. Another Stephen Minch one. It's hard to read that. Mind and Matter. Fonts matter, by the way, especially for the title of your book. Oh yeah, Tom, uh, thank you. Jim Sisti was number four on that, uh, the Restaurant Magicians video. So it was Dan Fleshman, Michael Close, Bill Malone, and Jim Sisti. And I watched that thing so many times. Uh, really great video. Magical Arts Journal, uh, Paul Harris edition. Oh, I recognize this guy now. There's Phil Goldstein's Fism Notes, 1985. Jerry Andrus, Nameless Notes. Uh, news for you, Jerry. Looks like there's a name on these notes. I know you're a creative genius and all. I think you missed the boat on that one. <laughs> Up close with Andrus. Oh, and here's here's one. I have these as well, so this will be something I can use as a as a giveaway or something in the future. It's a couple notes from uh, Peter Samuelson, who fantastic New York magician, very theatrical close up. That was the the name of his the hardcover book, theatrical close up. This is theatrical cabaret um, lecture notes. Lewis Ganson Presents. That was such a great series. I love uh, the writing of Lewis Ganson. Oh, speaking of uh, theatrical close-up, hmm, there it is. The paperback edition. 
That's a cool surprise. That one's hard to find. Uh, random photocopies of some tricks. Something. Johnny Thompson's routine for the balls and the net. I've seen Johnny perform that. Classic trick. What is this? Interesting. This looks like uh, a script. Oh, yeah, it's a script and event production notes. <laughs> Pro Professor Gizmo's Haunted Adventure from Unique Events Incorporated. So it must have been a, a pitch or a proposal for uh, probably a custom created event. That's interesting. There's always those weird things that get slipped into magic libraries. I know I have a number of them that just get slipped in between the books. They're random things. That is one of those. Uh, random page. Ooh. Here's one I remember from... This was like... Man, this was about 1996. Um, just when I was getting started in magic. I remember... Uh, yeah. Is it Har Yar Harley? Learpool? I think is how you pronounce his name. Uh, and uh, really interesting magic. He, I, I remember printing out... He had a free sample from this book. I remember printing it out and having that in my collection for a long time. Uh, and it was Coke from Shoe. Uh, I, and, I, and I learned it from his free sample. And, but I've never actually had the whole book, so interesting. And yeah, for those of you just joining us, Paul's asking the question, where did you get all these books? It, the, yeah, they came from a magic auction that I purchased kind of these, these mystery lots of books. It was just like, here's a picture of a box and you spread out a few books. I had no idea what's inside. So that's exactly what I'm here doing, is finding out what's inside. So far, ton of cool surprises. And we're at, we're at the bottom of the box. So uh, just a few left to go. <laughs> this one, another one that I do have in my collection, my digital collection at least, uh, Jay Sankey Lecture Notes. Because when I moved, I scanned all my books. So this is part of the process of uh, repatriating my library. Sankey up to date. Of course, with Jay Sankey being up to date means like it's a monthly process. By next month, it's out of date again. He creates a lot of magic. Tommy Wonder, Wonder Material Lecture Notes. Written, performed, invented performed, published, but not printed by Tommy Wonder. It's very thorough crediting. <laughs> Another Peter Duffy book. Here's Paul Gertner's lecture notes, What I Wish I Knew in 72. I uh, remember seeing these. This is his advice, kind of like advice to himself when he was starting out in magic. And the last one is called Jammin' with the Fellas. And that's exactly what we've been doing here. Just sharing some magic, having some fun with the fellas or the ladies, whoever cares to join. And, oh, this is Jason England. Uh, lecture notes from 2009. So Clark can probably help me with this. If it's Jason England, you know it's pretty heavy-duty card stuff. So That's it. That is box number two. Uh, oh, goodness. I have so much work to do to, to actually make use of these books. Because it's nothing but a pile of paper. And, oh, hey, Rick. Uh, nice of you to join us here. Uh, yeah, old books. And, and, Rick, you missed the beginning. But, man, there is some classic mentalism in here that I know, you know Rick would be very familiar with. Uh, you know, center tear techniques and Orman McGill. I know Rick was uh, very familiar with Bob Nelson uh, Enterprises and all that stuff. So a lot of great mentalism, old mentalism stuff. And Rick knows very well uh, how that all goes. <laughs> but yeah, got so much work to do. Thank you for joining me here on the unboxing number two. And we got one more box, which I'm going to do at the end of this week. And... 
Caitlin is asking where I'm going to keep all these, and well, we need we need to talk about this. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a dedicated room in the house, just for magic books. <laughs> This is Ryan signing off. I'll see you next time on Tips and Tricks for Magicians. Not that there's any tips nor tricks, but I'll be able to use these to share tips and tricks of the future. <laughs> so, have a good night. Oh, and if you're watching this live, uh, coming up later tonight in about an hour from now, be sure to check out the IBM Jam live lecture series. We got Alan Fisher on tonight from Tennessee. He's a fun, creative guy about storytelling and magic and sharing some weird ideas of his. So uh, be sure hey, every Tuesday night, it's a place to be. It's IBM Jam Live Lectures. Have a good night.